we're about to record a makeup tutorial video. I never thought this was something I would do, but I had a subscriber ask for it and I'm flattered. So the good news is I'm not an expensive makeup user and I don't use a ton of products. So these are, this is my like arsenal. I don't use all of this every day or even most days, but this is what I work with. So I'll kind of walk through it, show you what I do, why I do it, where I learned it. I do my best and I will say like I'm at least at a point with my makeup where I feel I do a better job at it than most professional makeup artists. Like when I have my makeup professionally done, I don't really like it as much. I like how I do it. At most I like them to maybe like if I'm going on camera, I like when they do my foundation because they have certain ways of setting it that looks better on camera or like I like for them to put my eyelashes on. But aside from that, I actually think I do a pretty good job. So. Let's get started. I can't believe I'm appearing on camera without makeup, but this is what I look like without makeup. First and foremost, in order to be good at makeup, you have to get your skin to a good place. And this is something that took me a long time to learn. I do not have naturally good skin, like I've talked about over and over. You can see I have some like natural redness undertones. It's not really rosacea, I'm just Irish, so kind of red. My brother's really red. And I had um, a lot of acne scarring over the years. And so before we even get started, um, to go back, I've gone over a lot of the things in my routine that I used to get ready every morning, but I've also used a lot of things like chemical peels. I take medication for acne. I do derma planning on my face. I'll get facials. I've done microneedling. Big fan of all those things. I've done um, laser facial treatments. All of those things have really helped to reduce the redness, reduce my pore size, get rid of scarring, um, and give me clearer skin. But the main thing I have to think right now is my Accutane, which I'm so grateful for because it's been absolutely killing it. I did have a bad sort of first month mental health wise, but after that it totally calmed down. It's been great ever since. So in the mornings, I wake up every morning, I wash my face with a very gentle cleanser and this like additional ointment my dermatologist gives me to put into it so that it's more moisturizing because Accutane can really dry you out. So I moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I use my Obagi Vitamin C Serum usually two to three times a week. I put on sunscreen on my face, neck, hands every single morning. Sometimes put on my eyelash product that I've also included in my newsletter that um, is kind of like Latisse but a little bit cheaper. Works really well. I've also had my eyebrows microbladed and I um, get a little Botox in this one because it's lazy. So I start off with like my face being pretty symmetrical, my lips are filled, so I don't have to do a whole lot of like restructuring work. The only thing I contoured to change the shape of is my nose. I have a little bump right here, so I'll go through that. But as a whole, I think a lot of liking your makeup is liking how you look to start with. So if you can get your skin um, and your, your main features to a place where you like them, it's a lot easier to jump in. I get my makeup brushes, which you can see here from Amazon. I think it's a huge pain to clean them. I doubt that I clean them thoroughly enough for them to actually be sanitized. And I don't believe in paying 30, 40, $50 for a brush. Like I'm, I'm not doing it. I can get all the brushes I just showed you on Amazon for like $20. So I do that periodically, like throw them out once a year, just start over for the most part. It works really, really well. Um, so I would highly recommend that. So I start once I'm all moisturized with this master concealer. I get it at Target. It is like maybe $9 and it lasts forever. I love it so much. Then I also don't like putting concealer over my foundation. You'll notice, and I do watch some makeup tutorial videos to see what other people do and I try it, but sometimes I just notice things work better for me and this is one of them. So I think that's part of being good at your makeup is just experimenting, keeping up with trends a little bit, but also knowing your face, knowing the style you like and what you're going for. So I take my concealer and I actually kind of use it to contour. I use it to contour this bump in my nose, which is right here. And I also want to like really lighten this space right here because my eyes are a little bit more close set than I'd like. So I'm trying to bring my eyes out. It's good to know your bone structure and what you're trying to do. Um, I also then have a little bit of a like line underneath my eyes. So I fill that in with concealer and I just draw a straight line down my nose so that I'm straightening that little tiny bump that I have. I do the same thing on both sides. Again, draw underneath the nose. You wanna highlight under the nose to pull your nose up. So just giving myself a little bit more assist there. And then I have a couple of little scars from acne that I just fill in through here. Um, if I'm doing like a full set of makeup, sometimes I'll go heavier and like really fill in concealer in those areas, but on a normal day like today, I'm not gonna do that. My next step depends on which product I'm going to use. I'm, I might add something new. I used to have kind of a like light day, medium day, heavy day kind of rotation. 
this is my this is my professional makeup day. This is Giorgio Armani, Armani's foundation. It's like $70. It's really nice. I'm not going to use that today. It's not a special event. And I'm not going to use my medium day one, which had been the Kat Von D. But most days I'm using this. My CC cream is just slightly tinted. It actually has pretty full coverage, as you'll see. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to even replace my medium foundation because as I've gotten my skin to a better place, I just don't need as heavy coverage as I used to. I'm going to put a little bit on my little egg blender, and then I just kind of pat. Like, I like pretty full coverage anytime I do foundation. That's kind of up to you what you're looking for there. In order to find some of these products, I have watched some makeup tutorial videos, like the best 50 foundations or something like that and took note of the qualities that they listed for them and I am usually looking for full coverage and so that's something I tend to go to. This CC cream is heavier than others. Some CC creams are lighter. This one actually really is more like a foundation but it does not feel heavy on my face and that's one reason I really enjoy it is once I have it on and set I at no point feel like I'm wearing foundation throughout the day also moisturizing enough that I don't actually need a primer under it because again this is like another moisturizer and for my skin type again because I'm on Accutane right now especially the more moisture I can get in my skin the better so like the Kat Von D one that I used to use was really heavy full coverage a lot of people use it on TV because of that and it, it does do a beautiful job like she's a tattoo artist so any of her products like they pack on, like you're not gonna see through them. But throughout the day, like I just felt like my face had 10 pounds of makeup on it and it felt really gross. I couldn't wait to take it off in the evenings. It probably was terrible for my skin because it couldn't breathe. This doesn't have any of that and neither does the Giorgio Armani one when I do use it. I think it's like $40. And as you can see, it is mega full coverage. I'm not dried out. I just love it. I'm a really big fan of, of this product. If I do have to use a primer right now, I've been using this Wet n Wild one, also from Target. Again, under $10, lasts forever. My next product is like the Bible of makeup and it's really cheap, um, but everybody uses this. It's called Airspun. It's a powder. You can get it literally Dollar General. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it lasts forever and it's like, I feel like it's like this magic powder pot. It just never runs out. I don't know how. Very translucent, beautiful powder. And I just use this really to like set my makeup and so it doesn't feel greasy and also so it doesn't like move. Again, people do their makeup in different rotations. I know a lot of professional people do their contouring and, and, their, and even their eyeshadow before they do their foundation. That's just not my speed. I like to go in this routine. So um, this is helpful though in ensuring that like my makeup doesn't move as I'm putting more things on top of it. Next, next I move into my contouring phase and I do still use the Kat Von D palette for this. I love it, it's amazing. I think it is $50, but it lasts a really long time. It has a nice, range in here and the cool thing about Kat Von D is you can actually replace palettes as you run out of them you don't have to buy the whole thing all over again so like I've actually already replaced this one because I've used it up so I just bought this for $14 I love that a lot of people don't let you do that with palettes I think that's a nice touch I did buy this specially it didn't come in my kit it's a contour brush looks like this I got it on Amazon again for like $14 to do your contour well you need to watch a video I had just kind of been doing whatever I saw other people doing for the longest time and just thought it was sort of a one size fits all thing. It's not, you really need to know your face. You need to know what you're trying to achieve through the contouring. And once I figured that out and really like took some time to understand it, I got much better. So previously I was doing my contour all through here. I was doing it all through here, down through here. I don't need to do all of that because I have a very narrow face as you can see. So again, I'm trying to widen my face and bring it out. Um, so what I need to do is take a little bit of contour and just do it right up here in the arch, like that. So you wouldn't even really see it down my face. I should look at my mirror, not my computer, because I'm gonna mess up. <laughs> and then, again up here, I'm trying to broaden, and so I want to just do right here 
and then I still want to do my jawline because I want it defined and that's the extent of that brush. And then I'm going to take another contouring brush. I did <clears throat> buy this one specially to you. Again, it didn't come in my kit. So I bought a contour brush from Sephora. This is like the one time I paid $20 for a brush and it's dumb, I'm sure, because I found it cheaper. I was just being really lazy that day. I contour the end of my nose because I want to flatten it a bit. It's kind of pointy. So I want to flatten my nose a little bit. And then again, because I want my nose to be a little straighter, I'm going to draw straight lines like down like that. I'm then going to take my brush, go in, you always want to contour up, blend it in, into your hairline. One thing you want to make sure down here is that you're not creating an effect where your nose, I mean, your, nose, your neck and your face are different colors. So make sure you really blend very good through here. I kind of blend it down like into my neck. Okay, so that's my contour. I then need to come back in and do my highlights that complement that. Again, I used to do this all wrong. What you really want to do is come in and like basically bake in the contour. So I'm gonna come in between these two lines that I created in between the cheek and the jaw to create some space. I'm gonna do the same thing on my chin. You wanna think of like where you want to draw the light or where you want to draw the eye. And so you definitely wanna make sure you don't skip on highlighting your features. Um, so I go straight down my nose here in between those two lines I drew. I'm then gonna also do underneath to lift my nose up a bit more. And then for the cheeks, I'm gonna go right up here. And the thing I love about the Kat Von D palette is this stuff is very matting. And so while my moisturizer foundation has a lot of moisture in there, if I had a moisturizing contour palette, like a liquid one, I think it would move around a whole lot and my face would not be nearly as um, set when I finish. So the combination of these two products together works really well. I'm going across my forehead, down on the sides. And again, I only know to do this because I watched a video. So if you don't know how to do your contour, figure out your face shape and then spend some time watching some videos about different face sizes and shapes and how to use your makeup to draw them out. I then go back over to add a little more color. So I take my bronzer, it's from e.l.f another Target product, and I kind of go a little bit heavier on top of the same area I previously contoured. Heavy makeup's really in right now, but really only in certain places. So it's okay to go really heavy on your cheeks. It's okay to go heavy on your eyes, but not like, not like it used to be, like I'll get to that. Still do a lot with your eye, but it needs to look a little bit more casual, but color on the cheeks is very popular. So then I come back in with blush, kind of um, get further into my cheeks. This is CoverGirl, I think. Yeah, it's CoverGirl. <laughs> Some of these products I have literally been using. I just take this large blush and like kind of blend it all in and make sure I don't have any like thing that stands out you want your face to look like it's one cohesive painting. Um, depending on how I did with my contour, I take my little egg that still has some foundation on it. And sometimes I like go back over the outside um, corners of my nose in the middle just to make sure I'm continuing to lighten it in the areas that it needs to be. So that's most of the face. Next, we're gonna go to eyebrows. Like I said, I've had my eyebrows microbladed. I also have Botox in them, so there's not a ton to do. Also, I'm drinking coffee with lemon water in it every day, and it's great. It's really helping with like digestion. I used to spend so much time on my eyebrows because they were not great. Now this is like the quickest part of my routine. So again, heavily suggest microblading. It, it just changes your life. First, I usually take this eyebrow pencil. It's by New York and Company. I love their brand. I use it for all my lip products as well. I like this because it's just a very smooth pencil. And what I do is I kind of come back in over my microblading. I can see the exact lines, but microblading does fade over time. It's been about two years since I've had it. I'm actually due to go in for a touch-up appointment this month. So I just kind of go back over where it's fading and draw those lines a little bit more thickly. It, it depends on your coloring, whether or not you'll need to do this post microblading. Like I have a very dark set of features and hair color and, and I wear my makeup pretty heavily. And so you can see that when I don't do this, the eyebrow still gets washed out, even though I have very dark hair and very defined eyebrows. I still need this. If you're somebody who's blonde, 
you might not need to do this. It'll just depend on um, your skin tone and features. But for me, the microblading saves me a ton of time and it makes my eyebrows look really good when I'm not wearing makeup, but they do still require a little work when I do want to wear a full face. So same thing over here. I come in, I wanna make sure my little arch right here is defined. Fill that in a bit better. A little pointy brush like this. Can you see it? Like this. And I come back in, I have, I have two makeup um, eye palettes. I, they're both Tarte. And one is Tarte and Bloom. And then one is Tarte Toasted. Love these. This one was my first Tarte palette. I bought it two or three times. I don't use it as much anymore. It's pretty empty now, but it's a great palette. Once it runs out, I probably will buy it again, but I just have really come to like the other Tarte palette better. And I don't particularly need the colors in here, but it's a really nice neutrals kind of palette. Very versatile. I come into this really dark brown right here and I just fill in my eyebrows a little bit more. If you are having to do your eyebrows without a palette, there are stencils, or without microblading, there are stencils you can use. You want your eyebrows to start at the corners of your nose. You want them to peak right at the corners of your eyes and then slant back down. That's kind of the shape that most people should go for. Next, I'm just gonna take this white color as my base for my eyeshadow and put it all over my eye. I don't mean to brag, but I have really good eyelids. <laughs> And I know this because people will often ask me to do their makeup for them when we're um, at events or things together. And they're always like, you're really good at eyeshadow, do my eyeshadow. And I've noticed that the reason I'm good at eyeshadow is because my eyes are really easy. They're just flat. And a lot of people's are not. They also have a natural crease. So I understand that um, some people have to do a lot more work with their eyes than I do. Again, I have no variations, I don't stray from this. I just have like degrees of which I do my makeup. Like some days I don't do full makeup. Um, also, I use this little tool to keep my eyebrows defined. Again, you can get these at like Target, Walmart, Amazon, anything, like pack a tin for like $10. You can also use it to dermal plan your face, but I use it when my eyebrows are like growing hairs that I want. Instead of tweezing or plucking, I come in and I use this little razor. Next is my Tarte Toasted palette. I love this palette. It's just so beautiful. It has such great colors. This is a really great shimmer that's almost out. I'm almost in need of buying this palette all over again, but I'm just obsessed. So I'm going to start with this brown and I mix it with this like sort of more shimmery brown called Simmer right there. Or sometimes I'll go up here and use this one, but they're both more, Sunset is the name of that one. They're both more like shimmery browns and I mix them together to form the base of my eye. And take this like slightly slanted, very feathery, fluffy brush to do it. I stop right about here because again, I want to pull my eyes out. So I'm trying to keep the insides of my eyes very light and I want to pull them out because I want to create more space over here. So I actually go past my eye. And on the other side. Um, one thing you should do again is figure out what you're trying to do with your eyes because if you're if they're too far set you're trying to bring them in and then additionally like you need to figure out your bone structure like I have a very strong bone that runs right here and right here that makes it really easy for me to do my crease some people will say that this is now a dated technique I do not ascribe to that view at all I think that's bogus I think a crease is dynamic and amazing so I use this sort of dark burgundy red called Cozy in the palette. And I take this very thin, needle thin kind of brush and I get the tip of it in there, just the very tip. And then I come in and I draw my crease. So find where your crease should be. If it's not actually there, you can still create. And I think that makes such a difference in my eye. It's just how like much they stand out, how much they pop, how much they kind of sit up from my face. I So that's once I've defined them. That then also kind of divides my eye a little bit better into quadrants that I feel like I can work a little easier with. I next take this brush and I go into both the Cozy, the burgundy I used before, and then this top one here, which is called Crackle. It's this really great dark brown sparkle. And I kind of try to get lightly in both of those, but I go into the corner of my eye and I basically fill in this bottom corner up until the crease, like a triangle. 
And then, because I wanna create a little bit more depth up, I lightly go up and I draw just along that brow line right there. Again, still doing kind of a triangle type shape and not getting very far into the eye at all. I want this out, because um, this is how I'm bringing my eye even further out from my actual nose. So you'll see it looks like that. All of it's really messy. It's okay if your makeup looks messy as you're doing it, you're gonna blend after you get everything on there, so don't worry about that. I get that blended in, and then I'm gonna take this brush and go heavy into some um, like lighter, more sparkly colors. I'm gonna get into this one that's almost gone in the palette called Candle. It's still there on the edges and I really like it. And I'm gonna go into the corners of my eye. Even like over here is fine. And I go up and over. I'm trying to create some height here. All the way to about right in the middle. And then I also have this other palette I got from Ulta called uh, Physician's Formula. It has a ton of sparkle ones in there. So I like it. I usually use the lighter two on this side, these two. And then I, they're a little bit more heavy in their sparkles, so I kind of set them like this in the middle. All of that makes my eye look a lot bigger and deeper than it is. I'm gonna repeat it on the other side. Depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I'll even take these and go like underneath my eye. That can be fun just to add a little bit more dynamic, like dynamic of a look and to give you some sparkles underneath. It makes it look a little glitzier. This depends on what you're doing. Lastly, I take this Sunrise, which is a very pale, pale, pale pink, whitish pink, and I go right into the arch of my eyebrow. And then I also usually do this little corner inside of my eye. Now I'm gonna clean up and blend. So to blend, I have this nice fluffy blender brush. It's also an e.l.f. product from Amazon. I also have this like slanted brush. And then I have this cleanup brush. And I don't know if this is supposed to be a cleanup brush, but I use it that way. So that's what we're about to use. First I go with the slanty brush into the corners of my eye and I blend up and in, because I've drawn it out to about the extent of where I want it. I don't want it any further out. And I also want to make sure this looks like cohesive and like it doesn't look like there's a hard definition of where it starts or ends. And I want to soften the dark color just a little bit. So very lightly blend like that. Next, I'll take the actual blender brush and just get all in here, because I want it to seamlessly go from dark to light. I don't want it to be noticeable when you're looking at me. That's one thing I hate. I've noticed a lot of women who do the, like dark corners. It's like very defined. It's, you can tell exactly where the dark starts and begins. And like, I want it to be kind of a slow fade. So I'll even like blend some of the sparkle over here. And then I come under my eye, make sure we don't have any dusties. Um, and then I double check again through here because I don't want to have any darkness through there. It's not good for the illusion I'm trying to correct that I have wider set eyes. So if I do like, again, I use the mirror, I'll come in and like use my concealer brush that has some leftover concealer on it and just basically take that out. I wanna keep it really clear through there. All right, we are almost done. First things first, curl my eyelashes. I have pretty naturally long lashes. I don't really love curling them extensively, but I basically have to do a little bit or they're so long they get mascara all over my eyebrows. So I curl them a little bit just to set them. I love the look of fake eyelashes. I cannot tell you how to put them in. A lot of people do them all the time. I don't because I don't really know how. And because my eyebrows are dark enough that I just don't really need to. This is my Can't Live Without a product. It's a Maybelline eye pencil. I've been using this brand since high school. I'm obsessed. Um, Maybelline, unstoppable. They have several pencils. The other ones are crap. It has to be unstoppable. I used to use it in Onyx, but because it's now not quite as cool to have such heavy set eye makeup, I've switched to Espresso, which is a very dark brown. I actually like it a lot better. I think it makes my eyes look just as dramatic, but less like fake. So I love eyeliner for my eyes. I like to take it out. I do a little bit of the cat eye and I like to go about through here. 
So this pencil is really not a pencil, it's a roll up thing, um, but it's pretty easy to get a pretty sharp definition to it. So I start with the line, I go slightly up and out for where my eyelid is, and then I pull it in and I get a little thinner as I go in because I don't want it to look like I'm wearing a ton of eyeliner and I go across my lash line. I stop at the lash line. In years past, I might've gone all the way to the corner. In years past, I might've done a lot thicker of a actual line, but this is where we're at these days and I think it's enough. Really like it. You can see it just looks like that. And then some days, if I'm gonna do any under, I do a little tiny under on the actual eyelid right there just to create a darker corner, um, but that's as far as I would go. The main thing too is you want to make sure it's fully aligned, there aren't patches in it, it's all pretty equal, and that both eyes are even. So that's what you're going for. I'm not a great artist, so this pencil I think helps me achieve that, and that's my eyeliner. I have to have eyeliner, I think I look like hell without it. If I want a darker effect, I do have this Maybelline Line Stiletto Liquid Eyeliner that's black that I would use to go over it. If I'm doing like a night out, I would just basically go over what I just did. I would still do what I just did because I cannot draw lines with this. Draw my lines and then would just go over with this to make it a little bit darker. But I'm going the DMV today, so I'm not trying to stunt on them like that. I then have this Maybelline Clear Great Lash that I love. I use it for two reasons. I use it to prime my eyelashes. Part of this just helps me make sure they're not stuck together um, because I just have a lot of eyelashes. So mascara can be a bit of a pain for that reason. It also helps, I think, lift them and I think it helps um, the other mascara sit on your eyelashes a bit better. So I go over both eyes with this. This is a very recent bottle I purchased and you can tell that because it's still clear because the next thing I'm about to do muddies it up, but it does not matter. This is really just a primer. I'm not, some people use clear mascara like to wear out as just that. I, I would never do that. I use it as a underneath tool, so. Next what I do is I go over my eyebrows with it, which of course picks up some of that product. Actually the jar, so it gets really dark by the end of it, but this keeps my eyebrows from moving, keeps all that product in there. I think makes them look a little bit more set, love the effect. And then I take this brush and kind of brush them up a little bit so that they don't look too stationary. Like I want you to be able to see some of the hairs in the eyebrow, because it's very in right now. So just slightly brush up like that. And that's that. And then once again, brushing off, getting everything clear. Final step will be my mascara. Total Temptation is this brand. I get the blackest of the black I can possibly find. I love glam mascara. And I go really heavily. Like I love accenting my eyelashes. I always have to do that. I draw my first coat. First coat is really just meant to like make sure they're all covered. Get it out to the ends and lift them up a little bit. Come over here, do it on the same side. And then I kind of let that set for a minute. I'm gonna give them a second coat. I just lightly do my under eyelashes. If I do too much, I look like a spider. It's more like a more of a dusting than anything else. I'm gonna let those dry for just a minute because I wanna do a second coat. And while we're waiting, I'm so sad I don't have my normal lip liner down here because I rarely do anything else, but for the sake of the day, we'll do this one. Regardless, I always use New York um, products, love them, love their lip liners. It's an actual pencil, so I keep a sharpener around. I currently, because of the Accutane, my lips get so dry, they hurt and peel all the time. And so I buffer them a lot. And then I use, I'm using Aquaphor as a chapstick. It's the only thing that helps, but it actually is a really great primer. I don't think I'll ever go back. I basically use that and then I would draw my lip liner over it. I do full liner. I have no normal lip color, as I'm sure you've been able to tell throughout this video, I have very pale lips. So for me, most days I'm just gonna do an aquaphor and this very light pink from NYX um, over it that kind of just gives me the illusion of like not being in 
It's lipstick, but having like a color that I really like. This color is very fun. I would normally only do it at night. But I fill them all the way in like that. And then I would come back in with actual lipstick to go over them. I tend to like matte lipsticks. This is one I grabbed from Dollar General the other day. It's literally called matte lipstick by Lac. But I like these kind of burgundy colors. Like, these are fun. So that's way too dark for me, but that's how I do my lipstick. That's not how it usually looks. Um, come back up here. This this time you're gonna really focus on the ends of your eyelashes, not the entirety of them, and pull them up even more. So as you can see, my face is now fully done and set. The only other step I would usually take is to use like a setting spray. I left that upstairs too. Um, I got one recently from Ulta. I think it was Ulta and I just did their like basic misting spray and I love it. It was like $10. So I don't think it's, you don't need expensive products for that either. Just the story is that you can do your makeup with like a fairly inexpensive bucket of items. I don't think you need to spend a ton on your makeup. And I also don't think you have to be amazing at makeup to learn your face and learn what works best for you. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have questions. Don't show anybody my picture without makeup.